Hello and welcome to this tips and techniques video from Master Your Photography. In this series we've carefully crafted a collection of short videos designed to provide you with key points on specific topics without any of the unnecessary waffle. Our goal is to give you practical information that you can immediately apply to your own photography. We understand that your time is precious so we've condensed each video to deliver concise actionable information. With our tips and techniques series, you'll gain the knowledge and the confidence to improve your photography in no time at all. So that's probably enough waffle, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about the techniques that you need to master to capture stunning, sharp images of really fast moving subjects by using high shutter speeds, panning and flash techniques. Shutter speeds are fundamental in high speed photography. The longer the shutter's open, then the more subject movement will be captured. So the faster the shutter speed, the easier it is to freeze that motion. So the question that gets asked all the time is, well, how fast should the shutter speed be? And it does depend on the subject speed in relation to your camera. Now, most fast moving subjects are going to need a shutter speed of at least a 500th of a second, and some will need much higher than this. You'll find that sports and wildlife photographers go much higher with their shutter speeds and this is to make sure that their images are sharp because of uh, frozen motion but also to minimise the camera shake because they tend to be using long focal length lenses which are more susceptible to camera shake. Here we've got two examples of motion that's been frozen using a fast shutter speed. We've got the racehorses and a picture of a kayaker coming off a, ra a ramp there at a very high speed. Both these images have been captured using a shutter speed of a 1250th of a second. Now anything slower than that would have resulted in a blurred image due to the subject movement. Anything faster than that would have been absolutely fine. We could have used a faster shutter speed to really ensure that the motion was frozen. But the problem with using anything faster than you actually need is that you then have to use a wider aperture to let more light into your camera or you have to turn up your ISO setting. And by doing that, you end up with an image that is perhaps more noisy than it would have been otherwise. Manual mode gives you full control, but shutter priority mode lets you select the shutter speed and the camera then adjusts the aperture. So this mode is perfect for focusing on the action without having to worry about exposure. It's also really useful if you're shooting under changing lighting conditions. Maybe the sun keeps going behind clouds, so the brightness levels are up and down. So by using shutter priority, you can concentrate on the action and let the camera handle the exposure for you. Now, shutter priority mode is usually indicated on your camera with an, an S. Sometimes it might be with a TV symbol. I don't mean TV as in television. It will be an uppercase T and a lowercase V which stands for time value. So look for either of those two settings on your camera. Shutter priority mode is a great way to get started with any kind of action photography because it removes that variable of having to get the exposure right. Let the camera handle that for you by setting a fast shutter speed yourself and the camera will handle the aperture and even the ISO if you've got auto ISO set. Flash is another way in which we can freeze motion when there isn't maybe enough natural light around and it's really useful in controlled environments like studios as shown here. Now this particular image was shot in a darkened studio with a flash duration of a 4,000th of a second which has frozen the motion of those individual sugar crystals as they pour out of the dispenser. Now here's two more examples using the same technique to capture flour as it explodes through a sieve and a splash of water into a glass. If you're attempting this kind of shot, make sure you set your camera shutter speed to the maximum flash sync setting. Now it's usually around a 200th of a second, but check your manual to be sure. Now remember, it's the flash that's freezing the action in this case, not the shutter speed. If your flash settings can be controlled, set the minimum flash speed possible, but remember that by doing this, this may reduce the output power of your flash. So you might find yourself having to use a wider aperture or turn up your ISO setting to get the correct exposure. By using a portable flash unit, you can actually freeze action outdoors when there isn't a lot of ambient light around. This technique can also be used to darken the background, but it does require a fairly substantial amount of power unless your subject is close to the flash unit when it fires. 
Our third technique for freezing motion is panning. Now this creates a sense of speed and motion whilst keeping the moving subject sharp. In these examples, you'll see the motorbikes and the car are in focus while the background is blurred. Panning uses slower shutter speeds than some of our other techniques, so usually around a 60th of a second is a good starting point, but it does depend on the speed of your subject. And the technique is to follow the motion of the subject with your camera as it crosses your field of vision. By matching your panning speed to that of your subject, you can keep it in the centre of the frame and then at the midway point in the motion, squeeze down gently on the shutter button to make the exposure. It's important to start the panning action before you press the shutter, but then continue moving the camera throughout the exposure and don't stop until the exposure has completed. Now with practice, you'll be able to keep your subject sharp and blur the background, which really helps to create this sense of movement in the image. Mastering high-speed photography does take some time. It's best to maybe start with simple challenges and then gradually move on to more complex and faster subjects. Explore the different settings on your camera. Maybe start with shutter priority and then move on to full manual control and practice these three techniques that we've talked about here. So that's fast shutter speeds, using flash to freeze the action and panning your subject to create a sense of movement in the background. Thank you for tuning in to Master Your Photography's Tips and Techniques series. We hope you found this video useful and practical. Remember, each photo you take is a stepping stone towards becoming a better photographer. So, get out there and capture the world in your own unique way. Until next time, happy shooting.